Hello everyone, God bless you and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries More Than Conquerors program. We are delighted to have you here with us today. Yeah, I don't know about you and everybody else, but I'm having a lot of fun. Me too. Just to sit around and talk about the Word and talk oh, about our, our the dominion that God gave us yes, and expects yes. us to operate in and uh, the spiritual authority and the faith. Um, That's right. Hey, hey I'm... I'm happy as a hog in a turnip patch. (laughs) Well, that's lifestyle, and that's what we want to help you with here the day-to-day as we serve the Lord. So if you'll just uh, take a little break here, we'll be right back and talk to you about it again. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about some good stuff again here. I I think on the last program, Terry, too, we were talking about how, um, you know, we got started and learning. We were in our 20s, early early to middle 20s, and we um, each had two children, and our spouses, uh, we each had two little boys, and our spouses, uh, were, we were with them learning the Word of God. And uh, this was a long time ago, and we di- really didn't have a whole lot of teaching. We had some, some folks teaching the Word of God along that time, but there weren't the books and the oh, no. seminars oh, no. and the, the Bible TV schools. programs. <laughs> the Bible schools. Yeah, the Bible schools well, and, you know, Renee, and the mentoring. We, we didn't we, have any of that. We were all... Four of us, you know, Jackie and I, and you and Dean, we were Christians. Right. We were spirit filled Christians. Yes, we were. Uh, we were committed. We were faithful. We loved God. From great churches. We could have continued to live the way we had been raised right. and the way we right. had been taught. We, right. were, we were raised in great churches, but yet it was that old, uh, uh, old thinking or old line teaching, I guess, about how well you never know what God's going to do. You don't right. know the will of God. Well, maybe God will. Maybe God won't. Yeah. If you get sick, maybe God made you sick, or maybe mm-hmm. it's the will of God that made you sick, or maybe right. God's teaching. You, son. you know, we could continue to live that way. We, that, right. that wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't a bad life. We lived that way. Right. And, and, and a gazillion other people have. But we just started getting a hunger for there's got to be something more. I mean, I would right. sit in my pew at my church and say, I know there's more than this. Yeah. And I'd hear the missionaries come through and, oh, my goodness. You know, God had spoken to me when I was 13 years old. And he had said to me, you're a missionary. And that's all he said. You're a missionary. And I knew that was my assignment for the rest of my life. I knew that I knew that it wasn't that day. I mean, I was 13 years old and I knew mom and dad wouldn't let me go be a missionary. Uh, But I knew this will be my assignment for the rest of my life. And so I I knew what I was going to do. Uh, Where with you, you were going to go to you decided uh, you you had some job opportunities and model and and invitations and other things. But you said, look, I want to serve God, right? So I'm going to go to Bible school, and you chose to go, or was led to go <laughs> to a right. Pentecostal Bible school old. in San Antonio. And at that time, your your lofty imagination was all the church would allow for a woman right. to do was either well, to be a missionary right. or to be a pastor's wife, right. to play the piano, to sing, you know, to help your, right. to help your husband. Yeah. And so you went with that in mind. Uh, I was going along with my thing in mind, but both of us were saying, "There's got to be more than this." And right. then, of course, Dean Dean was raised in Lakewood Church, and he was learning different things, and, and he was in the same position. Jackie hadn't been in church all her life, but whenever she married me, she just locked in right. and, and kind of looked to me to teach her. So I was teaching her, but yet I thought, dear Lord, if I'm going to teach her, I need to learn some more. <laughs> and so then I knew we were going That's to right. Mexico as right. missionaries, and so I actually got rid of our television, uh, and just uh, somebody bought me, uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin's um Three, but he had three big books back at the time. Right. They later turned Wonderful into into books. lessons and taught per, yes. per lesson, uh, right. twenty six lessons, which is six months if you do it once a week. But at that time they weren't lessons; they were just big oh, books. They were, they were about this tall. Yeah. You know, they're almost they were like, like an eight, eight by ten yeah. or eleven and a half by twelve, uh, yeah. or thirteen and a half workbook. Uh, workbook, and one of them was blue, one of them was red, one of them was green, and one and the blue one was on faith. 
Right. You know, the red was on, on the power, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy green Spirit. was on prayer. Right. And uh, at that time, they cost $5. And I'll best, tell you, a, a friend of mine investment. bought me those, and I've told him so many times over the years, that's the best $5 investment you ever made no in your life. No joke. Because I took that blue one. Now, right. I majored on the blue one, the faith one, because I knew we were about to go to Mexico. Yeah, right. and no I knew joke. we were going to have to eat and, and stay alive. I devoured And I thought, man, it. I need some faith. Right. And I would sit, so I got rid of our television, and I would read that blue book to Jackie every night. Every night, every night of the world, I'd sit there and read that blue book. And they were so big, the pages were so wide, <laughs> that if you didn't watch it, your eyes would start dropping down to another line. So I'd have to get a straight edge and put a straight edge on it so I could stay oh. on. And, and we, and, and Jackie told Brother Hagen, oh, year or two later, three years later, maybe we were eating eating lunch with uh, uh, Kenneth and Aretha Hagen, Brother and Sister Hagen. And uh, Jackie said to, to Brother Hagen, then she said, Dad, she said, that blue book. Yeah. Besides the Bible, that blue book is what got us to Mexico, kept us healed, kept us alive, I believe uh, and made us a success. I believe Because it. faith began to grow on the inside of us. And uh, uh, by this time, now, we had heard Brother Hagen, mm -hmm. and by this time, we had heard Brother Copeland, Kenneth right. Copeland. And, uh, and so we're, I'm saying, wow, that's what God's showing me. Right. You know, so here somebody believes what I believe. Exactly. And uh, I remember the first time I took Jackie to a Kenneth Copeland meeting, it would have been no. 1972. We'd just gotten out of the army. And because uh, and, and, I, you know, I got drafted on my wedding day. So when right. Jackie and I got drafted, I uh, got married. I also got drafted the same day. So we had to do a stint in the army. And um, when, when we got out of the army, then I took her to a, a Kenneth Colvin meeting. And there wasn't a lot of people there. There were just maybe a few hundred. Right. It, it wasn't it wasn't a huge meeting. And uh, it's in a much bigger building than, than there were people. And, and Jackie started crying one night during one that three-day meeting. And I looked at her and I said, what are you crying about, baby? And she said, I'm just so excited that all these people <laughs> believe what you believe. She said, that you're not the only one that believes this. No, that's and, right. And I looked around at that crowd and I said, don't kid yourself, baby. All these people don't believe this. <laughs> but I said, I do. And I'm yeah. going to lock into it and we're going to live by it. Over 20 years ago, Terry and Jackie Mize began the Jackie Mize International Children's Foundation, we say JMICF. And we wanted to talk to you today and invite you to join and work with us in a worldwide effort to minister, help, and deliver really children from around the world. We work with orphanages, even human trafficking centers. We work to help widows and displaced women and we are working daily, um, more than ever before, because there's so many great needs around the world to work with orphanages and to help children that are really in desperate, dire need. I found two verses in the Bible, Proverbs 24, 11, that says, deliver those who are drawn away to death and those who totter to the slaughter, hold them back from their doom. And then in Proverbs 31, it says that we have got to speak up for those who don't have anyone to speak up for them. You know, JMICF wants to do this all year long. So we invite you to help us. And then also TMM, we take care of all the administrative costs also for JMICF as well as Terry uh, in his traveling ministry. So we are so grateful for anyone that can give us a partnership <laughs> endorsement and help us reach the world through JMICF. God bless you and thank you again. Mexico, and we, we we didn't have any support. Right. We didn't have any money. We didn't have any bank accounts. We didn't have any credit cards. I mean, God just said go, and we just packed our bags and went. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, I ought to give Matt uh, a, a picture I came across just this week of Jackie holding Lynn. Yes. Lynn's now fifty, holding Lynn in her arms, and we were getting into a, a single engine airplane, a Cessna. 206 single wow. engine airplane because a friend of mine from from oklahoma called me in texas and he said i hear you're about to go to mexico uh to live there you embark on a missionary lifestyle and i said yeah i am he said how are you going 
And I said, I'm not real sure I'm going. I didn't read the, the real truth was I had no clue because we had no money. And so I'm, I'm and we had no car. Right. And so I, I just said, well, I hadn't decided how we're going. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, you know, I'm a pilot and got an airplane, a six place single engine airplane, six seater. And he said, uh, if you'll pay the gas for it, I'll fly you to Mexico. I'll fly you and Jackie and the baby to Mexico. And I just don't know why I did, but I said, okay. And I said, uh, how much is the gas to fly down there? And he, he figured it up and called me back. And I think it's $250 for yeah. gas to fly their round trip to Mexico and back. <laughs> it's way south of Mexico, Oaxaca, oh, Mexico. And I've often said Oaxaca is not the end of the world, but it's certainly visible from there. And so we flew to Oaxaca, Mexico in the single engine Cessna. And uh, and I found that picture the other day. I'll, I'll try to get to Matt before he airs this program and and uh, it's it's a, it's a cool throwback. It is. Picture. It's wonderful. But anyway, we we got down there, Renee, with no money. We had fifty dollars. By the time we landed in Oaxaca, he he flew I down, that. And, and, and I had no money to pay him. But yeah. the night before he got there, he, he we made arrangements that he's going to come down, uh, land in our town. We're going to meet him, load up our goods. We can only take like two hundred pounds or something yeah. in the yeah. airplane, right. and load up our goods and go. And so uh, the night before, and I said, all right, I'll have the money for you. And man, I was believing for it. I was confessing. I was calling it in. And the night before he he picked us up, that we left, someone handed me uh, two hundred and I think two hundred fifty dollars. I think it's two hundred dollars with the gas, and he, he gave me two fifty. Because when I, and when I got to walk, I ended up with fifty dollars left. Right. So I paid him, and we flew to Mexico. Now the first place we stopped in Mexico, the border to to clear customs and go through customs mm-hmm. and immigration, uh, the immigration and custom guys wouldn't let us come. They oh came out and looked at us, looked at me and Jackie and, and that baby, and looked at the pilot and looked at that those boxes of stuff we had in the in the plane. And he said, "You can't go into Mexico with that stuff." He said, "You're missionaries." Well, and I thought this this guy has discerning of spirits. The devil's <laughs> anointed him with some kind of discerning of spirits that he can tell missionaries. Wow! Well, because he because it's illegal to be a missionary in Mexico at that time. Right. And uh, I mean, we were just like uh, uh, we were illegal aliens. <laughs> you know, we're crossing the border without. Permission and so uh, uh, he uh, he just said you can't go forget it leave now you know I think most young couples and had we not been in the word of faith trying to make this stuff work I think we just ducked our heads and said well yeah, God we right. thought you wanted to go to Mexico all these years I thought you wanted but I guess not so we we'll just go home well that yeah. never entered my mind to go home my yeah, mind was the, my job is to get to Mexico obstacles. you know old Robert said to me years later I didn't know this then but old Robert and I became friends. And then he said to me one day at lunch, he said, Terry, he said, I've run my life by three principles. And he said, number one, you know the will of God. Right. Number two, don't confer with flesh and blood. Right. And number three, get your job done at all costs. Well, I was living that good way anyway before Oral ever told me that. But that's really good advice from an old general. Advice. And so uh, I, Jackie looked at me and said, what are we going to do? I said, we're just going to go to another border crossing. And so I told the pilot, Mark, I said, the flies to the flies up the river here to uh, another crossing. Let's land there. So I don't know if it was at Laredo or Reynosa or Matamoros or right. you know one of those one of well, those border was, crossings. Yeah. And finally, we got to one that said, uh, "Okay, you can go in, but only for ninety days." Now they're supposed to give you six months, and he's only going to give it. No, no, not ninety days. I'm sorry, he gave us thirty days. He's only for thirty days. Wow. So they're supposed to give you six months, and instead he gave <laughs> us one month. And uh, so we we put our stuff back in the plane after they went through it all and uh, flew down there and then and then Mark left us and we were in Mexico, but only for a month permission. So at the end of the month, we had to go get either leave the country and come back in or go to the consulate in Mexico City, go to uh, immigration and, right. and, and, and customs and get permission to stay longer. Well, and you can tell folks, you know, by some of these stories that we tell you, is that it, it was really a progressive learning curve on every dynamic that we faced in, in in our personal lives and in our marriage and with our children and then with our ministries. That it was it was something that we literally uh, didn't quit. Well, I was going to say that's going. the common denominator. You and I talked about driving on that trip yeah. the other day. We said we just didn't quit. We, just we refused didn't quit. to take no for an answer. No, we right. refused to back up and say, oh, well, that didn't work. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, not working or an obstacle of can't find a border crossing at right. the moment. Uh, we just kept going at it. And I I, mean, if the only obstacle is being impossible, then faith yeah, will get it done. Right. <laughs> and so we just acted like, well, then we'll reconnoiter, we'll do something else. But it wasn't like, oh, well, this stuff doesn't work. Right. Or, and we never said, well, well, that, I know that's in the Bible, but we just can't do it. You know, that doesn't apply for today. And to me, it was all about really just keep working at it because it seemed to me like verses all through the Bible were were just giving you one more clue to help you work it better. Yes. You know, yes. that we started out with this amount of information, but then in a month later we had more information. Exactly. And a month later and then six months later we had more information and we just kept perfecting an act of faith, yeah. whether it was a prayer over a, a sick baby, or if it was, uh, we had to have $250, well now now we're gonna believe God for 300 or mm -hmm. 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Always go up. Always go Set up. Set your goal higher. And, and we would pay our tithes, we'd give offerings. Uh, we didn't act, we, we, made a, we made a commitment that we weren't gonna act poor. That's right. We weren't gonna you act. Can't, you can't talk prosperous and yeah. act poor. You can't talk heal and act sick. No, that's right. You, you, you got to line up your mouth and your and your actions and it, because it, faith demands action. action. It faith was a, without works is dead. It was a daily discipline and a daily pursuit of going after the things of God. And I think that's what distinguishes a lot of people, uh, even us back then, was that we really did love God. Absolutely. And we really we weren't just trying to get the bills paid or just trying to get uh, our name up in lights or trying to have a ministry. What we were what we wanted to do was serve God and help people and in the meantime be able to pay our bills and take care of our children. And it was it, it was just so simple it, that, that that's all we were trying to do. And, uh, you know, people were so unnerved by this, whether it was in your family or a close friend or a church member or a church leader, uh, was that uh, the whole response to all of that is, well, who do you think you are? Y'all are always they want to know who you think you are. And <laughs> of course, our answer would, would make them mad because we say, well, we think we're a child of God. Yeah. We think we're heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. We think we're more than conquerors. We think we're healed. We think we're blessed. We think we're prosperous. Exactly. That just really make them mad. But I that was all what the Word said, and we couldn't say we the couldn't, opposite. Yeah, no, right. You right. can't shoot yourself in the foot. And and the fact that, that I, I can remember, Terry, the very first time somebody said to me at my Pentecostal church, you're just trying to tell God what to do. Oh, I've had and that. And I said, Oh no, no that's I said, I'm just trying to do what he told me to do. And I remember that came out of my mouth and I was just I, I just thought, well that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to just obey God. Exactly. And and then when I found out I'll give you a verse that, that really, really helped me. Numbers twenty three nineteen. It no, said that God is not a man mean. that he should lie. Yes, yes, and if yes. he said a thing He'll do it. And if he's no, spoken no. it, he's going to make it good. Like the and I just, oh, my goodness. It was like, and here, I, here I'd already gone through three years and graduated from Bible college and had excelled in that environment of the Word of God and the local church and even traveled for the school on the weekends and played the piano and taught in churches and did different things. And then when Dan and I got married and then we um, moved back to work at Lakewood Church with his pastor there, I mean, it was just all, all of a sudden we were realizing uh, we're going to need resources we're going to need to have the bills paid, sure. <laughs> you know, and the, the next church. The yeah, the, the next church was my home church that we worked with. And um, they let us live on the church grounds and paid us thirty two fifty a week. And we didn't even have a car, but we just kept going forward trying to figure out how to have healed kids and not be, because my kids were very sickly when they were born, and it was just all kinds of things like that. And then trying to figure out, Dean was president of the choir, I was the church secretary assistant, and there were a lot of things going on, like you and Jackie were in Mexico, There was you were in the army, came back and went to Mexico. All of these things were, were being, uh, really, these seeds of faith were being planted sure. in our hearts. Sure. That God's a good God, He's sure. not part of the problem, and He wants you to succeed, and you don't have to be a beggar or lose your dignity. And we determine we're not going to back up. We're not going to back gonna up. We're not going to take no for an answer. We're oh going to keep going forward. Yeah. And that's what we did. And, and, and that's what we was talking about the other day on that trip. It's just, even, even with my first missions trip, you know, most kids, I think, that 
or called the mission fields when it's 13 like I was, you'd think you'd pick an easy trip. <laughs> like, well, I'll go to the church over here three towns away and paint some houses for some right, for right. elderly people or something. Right, right. No, my first trip was living in the jungle. <laughs> I mean, the, right. the jungle with man-eating animals and crocodiles right. and, you know, what yeah. have you, with, with an Indian tribe that didn't no, wear clothes. Yeah, in And the we heat. had to live wildcat style, no catch, no eat. If Nothing we shot a familiar. monkey, we got to eat monkey. We shot yeah. a... A, a parrot, we got to eat parrot. We didn't shoot anything. We didn't eat anything. And yet, and they told me, they said, now, if you come down here, you're going to be sick. You come, you know, you're going to be poor. Uh, it's going to be horrible. Wow. I wish I'd have saved their letter. It was a classic. <laughs> it was a classic. Yeah, um, we had that letter. Embalmed with unbelief and fear. And yet it was the truth. They were just telling the way right. it was. And so they said, it's going to be bad. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be awful. And I said, I don't care. I love God. I'm coming. Yeah. And sure enough, for now, I got yellow fever. I got, I, I guess I got tuberculosis. Uh, I never knew I had tuberculosis, but whenever I, I got in the Army later, yeah. uh, I was out in training one day, in basic training, and uh, they came out and, and, and blew a whistle and said, my, I said, yes. They said, get to the infirmary. They're calling you to the infirmary. So I thought, well, I wonder why I'm not sick. And so I went to the infirmary, and the, the doctor was an officer, you know, and, wow. and I went in there, and he oh, said, sit down, uh, you know, private. And I sat down, and he said, uh, why didn't you tell us you've had tuberculosis? And I said, well, sir, I haven't. You most certainly have. Why didn't you tell us that? You could have stayed out of the Army if you'd have told us that. And, and I said, well, I haven't had tuberculosis. He <laughs> said, you most certainly have. He said, I've got your x-rays. We took your x-rays the other well, day of your chest. He said, I see the scars, and I see where you've had tuberculosis. Why didn't you tell us? And I told him again, I said, because I never had tuberculosis. And I, I literally had left his office thinking that they'd made a mistake. And then yeah. it dawned on me several years later, I thought, right. I wonder if I really did have tuberculosis and God just healed me of it because they I saw it on the x-rays. I wouldn't but, doubt But that. I mean, I picked a trip, or God picked a trip, that was just, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it was the one, it was the 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 one to kill a new missionary. The one, And, and I got yellow fever. Isn't I got all amazing? those diseases. I had blood diseases where, where I was bleeding all over my body and had sore. I mean, I, they told me I was going to die. They thought I was going to die. And so uh, I my came my. home and still wanted to be a missionary. I mean, I only stayed home two weeks, went right back, and been going ever since. But well, and, so it was and, real to me. Yeah. It was real to you. You and Dean decided, no, we're right. going to make this work. And, and Jackie and I said, we're going to make this work. I mean, if we have to just. Exactly. You know, well, God has to send it with an albino rig and pink eyeballs. <laughs> well, he's going to support us. Well, and what we what we really built into us, which we don't see a lot in other people, and not, uh, probably the, the two most important things, is that we really did love God and we really had a hunger for the Word of God. Absolutely. We really wanted to work for God. And that we didn't see setbacks as an excuse to quit. That any time there was a setback or any time there was a challenge, it wasn't something that we used to to stop using faith. That's right. Or to stop That's obeying right. God or to not pursue a goal that we had set we, up we there that we wanted. We didn't want to compromise. We didn't yeah. want to sit back. We didn't want to say, well, exactly. this is good enough. I'll settle for this. We yeah. wanted we wanted to say, this is God's word and right. we're going to live this. You know, Renee, I've had... In those early days, you know these stories, but in those early days, I had three or four millionaires that would come to me to, and offer me all kinds of money. Right. <laughs> but they want me to ask them for it. Right. They want me to tell them my need. They're right. happy to meet my need if I'll just tell them. Yeah. But we had determined, just like you indeed determined, right. uh, you know, Word of Faith 101, you don't tell people your needs right. and you don't ask for a place to preach. You just believe God. And I had one, we were leaving town one day in Odessa, Texas. We were leaving Jackie and I and the kids. I don't think we had but two kids at the time. And uh, we were leaving to go drive to Mexico on a long trip. We had zero money. Uh, and I mean, there's no money in the bank. There's no credit cards. I mean, we got what we got in our pocket, and that's it. And we, that's we're, right. we're leaving town, and a that's millionaire right. called me that had a shop downtown, uh, and he, he said, hey, you're leaving town today? I said, yes, sir. He said, stop by here. I need to see you before you go. So I stopped by there, and I went in to ask him, you know, hey, I'm here. What can I do? Oh, I just want to see you before you left. And then he said, then he, took, he stuck his hand in his pocket, and he said, tell me what you need, Terry. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of you. Tell, tell me what you need. You need, you need anything? Well, I'm not. I didn't have anything, Renee. I needed yeah. stuff desperately. Right. But I'm not going to tell him. Right. He's not my source. And I said, No, sir. God meets all my needs according to His riches by glory and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you. 
And I said, listen, I got to go. And I walked out and he followed me with his hand in his pocket, followed me out the, out to his door and then followed me. I was parked about half a block down the street, followed me all the way down to my car with his oh, hand goodness. in his pocket. Said, I tell you, you sure you don't need anything. Are you sure? Are you sure? He had given me whatever I asked. And I didn't have anything. I needed gas money. I needed food. I needed. Uh, wow. I'm taking a trip to Mexico with no money, no vision of any money coming yeah. in from anywhere. I mean, no promise of it. And uh, he followed me all the way out there and asked me, now, Terry, just, are you sure you don't need anything? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Reaching in his pocket. And I said, no, sir. I said, look, if God tells you to give me something, you just help yourself. But uh, you're not my source. I can't tell you. I said, God meets my needs. Thing. He said, well, all right. Have a good trip. Never gave me a dime. That's amazing. And I've had to other mission. I've had guys pull a wad of hundred dollar bills out like that, hold it in my face, say, "Terry, if you need anything, you need this. Tell me what you need. I'll take care of it." I mean, just like that, right? <laughs> and, and I said, "No, sir." God, and I mean, yeah. didn't I didn't have two pennies to rub together. No, sir. Thank you. I, I, God meets my needs. Are you sure you don't need anything? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm, I'm, yeah. God tells you to give. Help yourself. If He doesn't, then it's good. Yeah. Well, to, to me, it's it's the misunderstanding that the church has given. You see, I'm not trying to, to be the a world. Like you said, yeah. we don't trying to get our name up in lights. No. I'm just I, I want to eat and pay my bills, but I'm not going to let them be my source. source. Another missionary came to me one time, <laughs> and, and I mean, another not a missionary millionaire came in my house in in Mexico where Jackie and I live. Knocked on the door, came in the house, handed me a checkbook. Mm -hmm. I said, what's this? He said, it's my checkbook. I said, I see that. What are you giving it to me for? He said, well, open it up. There's a signature card inside. Because I stopped at the bank down here mm -hmm. and uh, got a signature card. You sign it. And from now on, your and Jackie's needs are underwritten. Personal needs and ministry needs. Anything you want from now on. And I just handed it back to him. And I said, thank you. I'm flattered. But I, you can't afford me. I said, if I trust in you, we'll both go broke. That's right. And I just gave it back to him. And he walked out and didn't give me a dime. But he wanted me to tell him what I need it. Well, we're, these are all wonderful stories to help you understand and maybe untangle some misunderstanding about really what a walk of, of faith is like, that we put our trust totally in the Lord and we do not trust in the things of the natural. And it's like Hudson Taylor said 150 years ago in China, he said, I was determined to move the hands of men by prayer towards yes, God. Yes, yes, and yes, so yes. with that in mind, um, you know, we're just going to uh, tell you again today one more time. We're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> and and uh, you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. God bless you all. Renee, I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. I said, God, if he pulls the trigger, my job is to believe your word and your job is to do something about the bullet.